Welcome everybody to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, thank you. Oh, it is so wonderful to gain understanding and insight and ideas into this covenant life. Two blood covenants. And we thank you for it. And we worship you in it today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, we started out in Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Then our question is, who is God? And let's go back now where we were in Genesis 17. Up until this, this point, in, in fact, the covenant that, that God made with Abram in the 15th chapter of Genesis was in the blood of animals. And it happened in a, in a powerful open vision. But then you come to the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord said unto Abraham, uh, unto Abram, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, or walk before me and be blameless. Now, how, how on earth can you be blameless? That is so easy. You do something wrong, repent. Amen. Well, I just don't feel like it. Oh. <laughs> when you don't feel like it is when you better get on your repentance game right yeah. now because God has made covenant not to remember your sins not to hold your trespasses Amen. against you. But if you don't know that, the devil will pound you over the head with that to keep you bound down and keep your faith bound up. Yes. And you walking around in the daytime with a big smile on your face and saying, hallelujah, we believe God. No, you're not. Amen. No, you're not. You're attempting to believe God. But there's a little short circuit there that has to do with the covenant of love. But he's already made covenant promise. See, the covenant is between the almighty God and the immortal man, Jesus. That's where this whole thing is headed. And you and I are partakers Amen. of his covenant. Yeah. We've been named after his father. Amen. Amen. Yes. Neither one of them can break the covenant. Even when Judas broke it, Jesus didn't. Yeah. And even after Judas broke it, Jesus called him friend. Amen. Now, Western-minded people say, so what is his friend? No, it's with a capital F. And that's covenant talk. Amen. It, it, the King James uh, translation is old enough to include that in many places, particularly in the book of James. But then more modern day translations, just not knowing any better, just made a little F and it didn't, it didn't shouldn't be that way. Because this, this King James was translated back in the day when covenants in, in Britain, England, particularly in England, Scotland, Covenants were made. One of your and my, my, my close friend, American citizen now, Rodney Howard Brown. Now, Rodney doesn't put the hyphen in there anymore, I don't think. He may still do, I don't know. But he's from South Africa. The connection, of course, is British. Mm -hmm. 
but he's an African. A British African. You get where I'm going with this? The only difference at all in his ancestry and in, the, in, in Africa, the only difference is the color of the skin. The first time I landed on the Oros Guadalcanal, customs agent came out there. He's a black man. Tribal scars. Very prominent. You could see him. And he came out there with a frown on his face. <laughs> And Cynthia, he walked up there to me and he poked me right here. When are you going to come teach us? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, when Jerry and, and Jesse and I were in Guadalcanal a couple of years ago, I, I said, is the customs agent that poked me on the chest is here? He jumped up to his feet. <laughs> Let's see, covenant. Those are covenant scars. Absolute understanding of covenant. Absolute understanding of the name change. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Rodney Howard. Well, the Howards and the Browns got together. Amen. And made covenant. Could have been through their children. I don't know. I've never asked Rodney about it. I'm, I'm... I'd like, I'd like to know, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> there was a hyphen there between the names. Rodney Howard Brown. Well, there's somebody named Brown Howard. The other half of that covenant. Praise God. Are we getting anywhere with this? You begin to see this? Yeah, but Brother Copeland, what's that got to do with me? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> Hold your place, sir, and go with me to the third chapter of the book of Ephesians, and you can see why I said Monday that this is just, oh, my, oh, my, 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 my. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Lord, before we do that, Let's slip to the third chapter of Galatians, which is just a couple of pages back in my Bible. Now, we know here in the third chapter where it says, in the 13th verse, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Can you see? I mean, and the people he's talking to know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds thereto. Amen. You don't break a blood covenant between people. Yeah. You sure don't break one between God and you. Amen. Amen. And I can just see those early Greeks saying, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Years ago, a man said this to me. He was a missionary. And uh, he was in Africa and tired. He, he was ready to get, get back home to England. And, and, and but he was, he was teaching and in, in particularly on this tape that I was listening to, uh, uh, on the Hebrew word chesed, covenant kindness. He said there was, a, there was a tribe in equatorial Africa. Their form of cutting covenant, let me remind you again, particularly those of you that had not been with us, with, but I said this Monday, I want to say it again. This blood covenant between God and Abram becoming Abraham was the original. 
This was the original. And out of that came blood covenants all over the world. Isn't it amazing? It was in native people right here on this continent. It was already here before any white man ever set foot on this place. That was the way law was established between peoples, between families, a warring tribe. It was very strong, but say maybe they were strong farmers. They knew the thing, but this other tribe, well, what they, they, you need covenant with them. And the two of them became a family and no record of any time that is ever broken. And that's what the apostle Paul was talking about right there. Amen. But you needed the help of one another. So you became a family. And these kind of things went right on down. Anyway, he said that this particular tribe, there was some, he was, he had gone back to catch the airplane. He's, he, man, he is ready to get home. He's so tired. And somebody came to him and said, uh, there's a, uh, some people that, that, that they, they, they want you to come speak to them. And, he, and they said, the chief of, of the village wants, wants to talk to you, wants to hear what you got to say. Well, they drove and drove and got down in the, in the area where this village was. And he thought, what am I going to say to this man? And then he saw it. He got it in his heart. These people cut covenant with slices in the ends of their fingers and they mixed blood like that. Now, even in the banks, there would be a little uh, picture there on the, the window and you reach up and put your fingers up there and the bank teller would put their fingers up there. This will be an honorable transaction. Now some stupid white man come in there and he just walks up to the teller. Boy, he's, he's red meat. You know, they don't hurt anything to steal from him. <laughs> but if he walks up there and does this, that's a different thing. And he thought, and the Lord said to him, tell him I want to touch fingers with him. And he said in 15 minutes, that heathen, illiterate old man sitting on a mud floor in a grass hut knew more about Christianity than 98% of the Christians of the world. He said he screamed and jumped to his feet and ran out and went to hollering at the villages. They gathered people up there. God sent his, God sent his messenger. God wants to touch fingers with us. He wants to make covenant with us his, in his son's blood. He wants to cut fingers with, touch fingers with us. Get in here. Get a, the God Almighty. He said that old man knew. And he said he believed every word I said and now so did everybody in those. They understood it. They understood more about the New Testament than 90% or more of all of the New Testament scholars in the world that don't know beans about a blood covenant. Ah. Well, you see, Brother Copeland, the thing of it is here, we know that in the New Testament, <laughs> Testament, the English peep writers were trying to tell us something. We're using the word Testament instead of covenant. Amen. They're trying, they thought you had to have sense enough to know that a Testament and a covenant is the same thing. Yeah. They were trying to tell us this is God's will. Amen. It's his last will and testament. Amen. Your church should be readers of the will every Sunday morning. Amen. This is the will of God. Amen. But you know, Brother Copeland, no, 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 no. 
that healing business has been passed away. Well, something not to happen to the blood. But who is God? Well, God is God. No, he's not. He is Jehovah Rapha. You going to change his name for him? I am the Lord that healeth thee. Lord, English says Jehovah, Jehovah. I am, do those things that are right in his sight, walk in his statutes, keep his commandments, and I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes, yes, Brother Copeland, but that's Old Testament. That, no, that's First Testament. Amen. That's First Testament. He hadn't changed his name. He is the God. This is a healing covenant. Now, Abram's, then Abraham's covenant was a national covenant that included healing. We have a healing, salvation, healing, prosperity covenant. That's the reason Satan got away with stealing the money of the church. My dear friend, I preach for him every year, Bishop David Oedipo, just outside of Lagos. Covenant man. He said, I, he, he said, Kenneth, I, 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 oh, he said, God taught me you could just praise, just praise him. You can just praise him until something happens. Yeah. But he said, I, with healing, I had no trouble with that. But he said, the problem I had was with finances. He said, I, I, he said, I struggled with that. He said, I, I read your book on the laws of prosperity. But he said, it was while I was reading Mama's book, Gloria's book, God's will is prosperity. Amen. And he said, uh, it was while I was reading her book, I had a visitation of the Lord. And he said, it's covenant. Yes. 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 Well, his eyes just fire when he said that. And the first time I met him, he taking me around, showing me the place. Now he said, this is the first. Now this is in one of the poorest nations on the planet. And he said, now all of this costs 250 million American. And no American money, no debt. Now he said phase two, which has already been done now. Phase two, because this was back in 2008, is 250 million American and it's in the bank. I thought, uh, maybe you better teach me. <laughs> and don't you think I haven't learned some things from him? He said this to me. He said, when I read, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He said, Kenneth, that's a blood covenant. I, I read it. I say, yes, Lord. And I just praise until it happens. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I praise until it happens. Yes. Because he said, once I see it, once he reveals it to me, we have, there's blood between us. That's done. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm covenanted to God. And now, that church seats 50,000. Five services on Sunday. And they have tents outside watching great big LED screens with 51,000 people in those tents every Sunday that comes by 
because a covenant people understand covenant talk. And once you tell them it's blood between you and God, that settles it. Praise God till it takes place. Just praise and worship till something happens. Hallelujah. That's the reason. That is the basic fundamental reason that you preach one, you preach the same message right here in the United States and little happens. You preach the same message in Africa. Thousands of people get saved because they're covenant-minded people. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why they're ready to believe it. And you preach it to people here and say covenant. The covenant don't mean anything. Well, it's a blood covenant. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, so what? (laughs) Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I've heard that before. Ain't you got something else you could preach? When are you going to preach something else? When you get this. <laughs> but that's the reason in this country you have to preach it and 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 preach it. And it's not a bad thing. Because once it's compounded and built into your very being, no devil of hell can take it away from you. I mean, you begin to realize he doesn't have anything left. He used to have the power of death. Under that old covenant, he had power of death, but not over the people that walked in their covenant. Amen. Amen. But he lost it. Our Lord and our Savior went to hell for you so that God's dream of a family that started in the Garden of Eden could come to pass. And it's happening. And it's happening all over the world. And we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.